going to pay these bills? Tell me that. I don't want any of your excuses. You're idle. Bone idle. Bundle of old newspapers and a sack full of assorted rags a day's worth. Don't you tell me you've been trying. It's a bad time of the year. Every time of the year is a bad time for you. <laughs> Look at them. <coughs> Will you listen to me when I'm talking to you? Sitting there reading George Bernard Shaw. <laughs> Everybody's political what's what. Have you finished? No, I haven't. You're a rotten rag and bone man. If you fill the cart with as much junk as you fill your head, we'd be all right. Have you finished now? Yes, I've finished. Right. <laughs> now I'll say a few words. Thank you. The problem we are faced with is quite a common one in this capitalist society we are unfortunate enough to live in. A slump. Or as the right-wing word jugglers prefer to call it when they are in power, a petty trade recession. Thus, avoiding any unpleasant memories of Jarrow, hunger marches and miners getting shot and so on. Oh, good, here we go again. <laughs> Three quick choruses and a red flag. Come on, comrade, let's have ya. The workers' flag is deep as red, stained with the blood of workers dead. If you did some, I wouldn't mind. You're oh, traitor! You are traitor to the working class! Who is? I'm no worker, mate. I'm a capitalist. Always have been. I've got me own business. I don't want to be nationalised. Why didn't you have a revolution in 1926? That's what I want to know. The general strike. Why didn't you take our opportunity and overthrow them? I mean, we could have had it. Equality for all. And I would have had a chance in the world. We wouldn't be sitting here worrying about bills. Why didn't you revolt, Dad? Where was you? Me? I was making a fortune in 1926. <laughs> Selling everything they were. At giveaway prices. We never had it so good. Ah, if only we'd had a pawn shop. That's where the money was to be made. Still, you can't have everything. Ah, oh, what's the use? All right. Since we live in your capitalist society, as much as it goes against my dialectic principles, let us try and solve our problems by applying your capitalist methods. First, we must see what assets we have got and temporarily put them to other uses, right? I don't know. Right. Assets. There's the horse, the stock, the ass, the cart and me. And me. I said assets. <laughs> you gotta stand over there with the bills. Right, now let's take them one at a time. Me. Well, I'm the brains of whatever we're going for, so that's me taking care of. For stock. Well, obviously we can't flog that, otherwise we wouldn't be facing this problem. The house. We could sell that and buy a tent or something. I ain't living in no tent. That's not the sort of response I expected from an ex-boy scout. One of Bagan Powell's originals. I'm 66. But the spirit soon dies, down it? You're a disgrace to your woggle. <laughs> that leaves us the horse. The horse, of course. Our problems is solved. I shall put Hercules out to stud. Oh, <laughs> yes. I shall get on to Captain Boyd Rocksport first thing in the morning. Oh, the Bloodstock Club will go potty when he is about this. <laughs> I can just see his offspring now, dragging themselves round Aim Tree, eating their way through the jump. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all you have to offer? I thought you was being serious. Serious? Don't make me laugh. That's what I'm trying to tell you. We've got nothing, mate. Nothing. We're derelicts. We've had it. We're doomed. <laughs> Look at us. The dregs. That's what we are. Dregs. The lower depths. Straight out of Gorky. He could have been writing about us. Dead gawky, Will. Well, it won't get any better with you just sitting there sneering. Do you know what's in the larder? Don't tell me. Let me guess. Skinny mice. <laughs> oh, very funny. You have me in stitches, you do. Harold, we've got to do something. And if you want help, I'll have to think of something myself. Oh, yes, go on. You do that. Let us see you work an economic miracle. Come on, let's see the phoenix rise from the ashes. <laughs> a 28-storey office block, and down the side in big lights, step toe and sun. And on the top, a statue of Hercules. 24 hours, oh, done in gold. It's a reminder of our humble beginning. Oh, this is a moment for posterity. The birth of the Steptoe Empire. 
Oh, look at him. <laughs> oh, shrewd eyes. The majestic curve of that forehead. The most noble ragman of them all. Julius Depto. <laughs> oh, the age of totting is about to begin. Can this merchant prince save us from destruction? It's coming. It's coming. I've got it. We're taking a lodger. My God, no! <laughs> Comprehend it. I mean, it's too big for small minds to take in. I need time. Take in a lodge. You think it's a good idea then? I think it's a diabolical idea. Why? I'm having strangers tramping over my house. It's not your house, it's my house. Well, I'll be here as well. Well, can you think of a better idea then? Come on, you've been taking a mickey. Let's hear from you. Well, yeah. Oh, them I talk now ideas. Well, I've made up my mind. I've decided we take in a lodger. We are not taking in a lodger. I mean, apart from anything else, we've only got two rooms, mine and yours. Yeah, I thought about that. He can sleep in yours. <laughs> well, where am I going? You can sleep with me. <laughs> I sleep in the same bed as you. Oh, you are joking. I mean, once those great boots come up, being in the same house is a testament to <laughs> It's my own room. I mean, at 30, whatever I am, I'm entitled to my own room. I mean, a man wants a little bit of privacy. Why? What do you do then? I don't do nothing. <laughs> what do you mean, what do I do? Well, if you don't do anything, what do you want to be on your own for? Well, because that's the way we live in the West. I mean, I'm not tribal, Dad. But if this was the South Seas, there'd be 18 families living in one long hut. But over here, a fella likes to be on his own. Except if he's got a bird. <laughs> Which is another reason why I want me own room. You haven't had a bird up there, have you? No. No. We well, one can live in hopes. I mean, there's always a first time, isn't there? And what's the point of me spending half the evening trying to lure her up there, knowing full well you're sitting up in bed picking your toenails? <laughs> so like a... Oh, my mind's made up. I'm putting an advert in the sweet shop window. <laughs> Two lets. Room in fashionable <laughs> news cottage. <laughs> Clean linen. Suit professional person, five pound a week, no wogs. <laughs> I might as well be frank with you, Father, seeing as you are determined to force the issue. The moment a lodger steps into this house, I step out. What do you mean? It's quite simple, I'm off. Why? That advert is a calculated insult. Oh, you mean a bit about the wogs? Oh, I can easily cut that out. No, 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 no. I don't no, mind no. having a wog in you in here. If you feel strongly about it, there's good wogs and bad no. wogs. Same as that, I suppose. I was only trying don't to... Don't keep going on about wogs. <laughs> it's me you are insulting. I never me. called you a wog. You know what I mean, mate. Look, that advert is tantamount to a vote of no confidence in me. What are you talking about? Aren't the breadwinner in this house? By taking in a lodger, you have, in one foul swoop, completely negated my being here. I mean, you don't need me. Th th that relegates me to nothing more than a Joe Runce. I'm sorry, Father. <laughs> I'm not going to have to choose. It's either him or me. You don't mean that, Al. I do. I mean, I've done my best, but as apparently that is not good enough, there's no further point in my staying here. Oh, well, you can do what you like. If you want to go, you go. I can manage without you. Five quid a week from the lodger and... Bit of business I can do in the yard, keep me going, I don't need you. It's come to a head then, ain't it? If you like. Right then. When are you going then? As soon as the lodger comes. <laughs> I'll stay until then, I'll give you a fair chance. I see. Well, I'd better go and get this advert put in, hadn't I? Yes, go on. You do that, go on. I'm going. All right then. I will. Good. Where'll you go? Don't you worry about me, mate. You look after number one. 
that by worrying about other people. Oh, I'll find that out to my cost. <laughs> you spend half your life looking after somebody else, and as soon as things get a little bit humpy, you get slung out. I'm not slinging you out. Now, let's go into that again. You can't put your advert in. I will. Don't you worry. No, I'm not worried. You should have died years ago. I know I should. It's a pity you didn't. I know it is. It's all right then. Right. I'll go and put the advert in. Yes, you do. I'm going to right now. Don't forget, as soon as he comes, I'm out. I heard you. That's all right then. As long as you know what you're doing. I do. Right. Right, right. <laughs> I'm off then. Go on then. I'm going. Good. <laughs> Here I go, then. Aren't you? Yeah, am I? Oh, I've been so busy, I haven't had time to think about the time. It's gone half past seven. You have worked hard, haven't you? Yeah, I should fetch about ten quid, that lot. That's uh, two weeks' rent for the room, isn't it? Have you had any inquiries about the room yet? No, not yet. Oh, really? I would have thought they'd have been round like flies round a dustbin. I mean, the housing situation being what it is. Don't worry, early days yet, they'll be round. I expect it's the cold weather stopping people from coming out. Yeah, I expect that's what it is. It is a bad time of the year for room letting, I would have thought. Ah, oh, you have done well, best day you've had in weeks. Here, yeah. hey, here, this is good, isn't it? That is a real Scots kilt, that is. That is a hunting stud. There's the art of material in that. Now, I fought with this lot in the 1918 war. Ladies from hell, the Jerry's used to call them. <laughs> I'd have thought you took myself in one of these. Did you ever see that photograph of me in the kilt? Oh, very sexy. <laughs> a little Andy Stewart, aren't you? I don't recommend wearing that one, though. I mean, it's got a few holes in it. <laughs> you know, and my lovely curtains for the lodger's room when he comes. Hey, <laughs> that's a nice chair, isn't it? 
Victorian. Victorian? I'll be daft. That's Regency, that yeah, is, mate. Right? That's never Regency. Of course it is. I mean, I belong to the Prince of Wales, that did. Look, he's got his feathers on him. Never. It's Victorian. <laughs> and what do you know about antiques apart from being one? Now, don't you. Talk about <laughs> I know me furniture and that's Victorian. Regency. It's wormy. Well, well. There. <laughs> that's clever, isn't it? 150 years that chair's lasted till you come along. Just what a woodworm. Well, it could have been done. You were, uh, that's for sure. Hey, that chair's been on the cart. I've told you before about putting woodworm stuff on the car. You know what they are when they get their teeth going? Here, get that chair burned before they march into the house. Have a change of thought. Have a go at him. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> You're potty. I am potty. What did I spend my life working for you? Working? That's a laugh. Last three days the hardest day's work you've done in three years. And don't you think I don't know why you've been doing it? What do you mean? I know you. You've been trying to get around me. Trying to make me change my mind about having a lodger. All that old shit about only stopping till he comes. You made sure he didn't come, didn't you? I saw you take that advert out. I watched you. I knew you'd follow me. I can read you like a book. You have let me flog my guts out <laughs> for three days, knowing full well there was no lodger coming. Well, you know there wasn't one coming as well. That's beside the point. I didn't know, but you didn't know. <laughs> you have been watching me. You've been laughing at me. You're sadistic, you are. A proper little mucky sad. The poor idiot wax into the wounds. Well, that's it, mate. I've had it. I'm finished. You back up for that advert, mate, mate, because you're going to need all the lodgers you can get. Oh, right. You've done some horrible things in your time, but never nothing like this. Oh, there's something very unhealthy about you. <laughs> well, I, was you I would go and have psychiatric treatment, mate, before it's too late. I should imagine you've been very interested in your case. How have we had rows before? Rail? Rail? This isn't a rail, Dad. This is far worse than a rail. You have robbed me of my dignity. <laughs> That's something we cannot gloss over. I'm sorry, Dad. Listen, Harold. I shall leave first thing in the morning for the hostel. As soon as I have found a job and an apartment, I shall send back for my things. Oh, and good luck with your lodger. Now that you will get on better with him than you do with your own son. Son. Coming in? Uh, no, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not staying. I was just passing by, so I thought I'd drop in and see how you was. Oh, I'm fine. And you? Oh, yes, yes. Very well, thank you. Been a long time. It's only been a week. Oh, yeah. Coming in? Oh, all right then. <laughs> I just. Passing by, I'll just drop in and see if you wanted any money or anything. No, no, I'm managing nicely, thank you. I was just having me dinner. Yes, I thought I could smell fish and chips. <laughs> yeah, sir? Oh, well, that's very kind of you. But I, I was going to go back to my apartment to eat. But, well, if there's any going, I might as well join you.
Oh. How have you been making out? Oh, well, I couldn't be better. Got a good job then? Oh, fair, you know, pretty fair. What are you doing? Oh, uh, well, I'm in advertising. <laughs> advertising? Oh, yes, ho oh, oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very interesting job, you know. Uh, 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 hidden persuaders and all that, and uh, trend setting and things. Oh, it does keep you on the go. Uh, how you been, all right? Nice and grand, though. Have you, uh, let my room yet? Oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, no trouble at all. Let the first day it was. Oh, <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> How's Hercules? Fine. He misses you, I think. He keeps looking round. <laughs> he bumped into two buses yesterday. <laughs> Harold. Yes? Why don't you come back? What, what me? Come, come back here? Yeah. Well, give up my job. Yeah, l let's start again. Oh, well, uh, wait a minute, Dad. I mean, oh, my goodness. I mean, I mean you know, uh, I, I don't think I can leave them not right in the middle of a campaign. I mean, I, I don't think it would be fair to them, Dad. It, it wouldn't be ethical. Oh, it would get me a terribly bad name in the advertising business. Harold, please listen to me. Yeah, well, you see, I can't just decide just like that. You see, I, I would have to speak to C.J. He is my associate. <laughs> well, these things do take time. I, I mean, you see, they are relying upon me for a new angle on this thing. So they need me, Dad. Harold, I saw you in the sandwich boards yesterday. <laughs> I saw you in the sandwich boards, in Orchard Street, and in out pamphlets. I saw you, Harold, advertising that Indian restaurant. <laughs> You've done it again, haven't you? <laughs> That's my dignity, gone for a burden again. I mean, I was on the point of coming back, but now you had to tell me you saw me, didn't you? You had to let me know. I mean, if I'd have been sitting in a Rolls Royce with a posh bird sitting next to me, you wouldn't have seen that, would you? <laughs> my sandwich board, you see both, don't you? Oh, you're not going off again, are you? Well, I can't stay here, not now that you know that. My life won't be worth living. I mean, every time we have a route, it'll be, go on, leave, get back under your sandwich boards. I'm not going to know that for the rest of my life. No, it wouldn't be like that, I promise. I'm sorry, Dick. If it'd make you feel any better, I haven't had a lodger either. <laughs> you haven't? Nobody wanted it. I had 15 people around, they all turned their noses up at it. Are you admitting you was wrong? Yes. And I was right? Yes. And it was a dark far day, like I said it was? Yes. All right then. I'll come back. <laughs> Honour has been satisfied. I mean, this makes you look as big a burke as me, don't it? <laughs> right. Fetch me my George Bernard Shaw. Here you are, then. I think I'll just nip down to that sweet shop in the morning and take that advert out of the window. You didn't bother. I took it out on the way over. <laughs> you knew I didn't have a lodger. Of course I did. You rotten, underhand little bleeder. <laughs> that makes us quits, don't it? <laughs> Back on the round in the morning. Right. What time do you want calling? Oh, half past ten, uh, eleven o'clock. Uh. <laughs> Lazy git. <Yeah. laughs> good night, good night.
<laughs> Selling everything they were. And give away prices. We never had it so good. Ah, oh, if only we'd had a pawn shop. That's where the money was to be made. Still, you can't have everything. Ah, oh, what's the use? All right. Since we live in your capitalist society, as much as it goes against my dialectic principles, let us try and solve our problems by applying your capitalist methods. First, we must see what assets we have got and temporarily put them to other uses, right? I don't know. Right. Assets. There's the horse. There's... Right. <laughs> now I'll say a few words. Thank you. The problem we are faced with is quite a common one in this capitalist society we are unfortunate enough to live in. A slump. Or as the right-wing word jugglers prefer to call it when they are in power, a petty trade recession. Thus, avoiding any unpleasant memories of Jarrow, hunger marches and miners getting shot and so on. Oh, God, here we go again. <laughs> Three quick choruses and a red flag. Come on, comrade, let's have ya. The workers' flag is deep as red, stained with the blood of workers dead. If you did some, I wouldn't mind. You're a traitor! You are a traitor to the working class! Who is? I'm no worker, mate. I'm a capitalist. Always have been. I've got me own business. I don't want to be na nationalised. Why didn't you have a revolution in 1926? That's what I want to know. The general strike. Why didn't you take our opportunity and overthrow them? I mean, we could have had it. Equality for all. And I would have had a chance in the world. And we wouldn't be sitting here worrying about bills. Why didn't you revolt, Dad? Where was you? Me? I was making a fortune in 1926. <laughs> Newspapers and a sack full of assorted rags a day's worth. Don't you tell me you've been trying. It's a bad time of the year. Every time of the year is a bad time for you. <laughs> Look at them! <coughs> Will you listen to me when I'm talking to you? Sitting there reading George Bernard Shaw. <laughs> Everybody's political what's what. Have you finished? No, I haven't. You're a rotten rag and bone man. If you fill the cart with as much junk as you fill your head, we'd be all right. Have you finished now? <sighs> yes, I've finished. We're going to pay these bills. Tell me that. I don't want any of your excuses. You're idle. Bone idle. <laughs> but you have 